We are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Weed Talk News. I'm the founder of Pro Cannabis Media, Jimmy Young. And I'm the founder of Cannabis.net, Kurt Dalton. Holy moly, Kurt, another crazy week in the world of cannabis news. And I guess you have to start at the top oh, with high times. They're at it again. Yep, just released, just hot off the presses from MJ Biz. Looks like one of their cultivation cannabis were going to be huge on the dispensary side is falling apart. And uh, the deal was terminated mutually by both sides. And it just begs the question, they were really pumping that reggae funding all week saying time is coming time is coming look at this headline and there was no real deal to be done it's another example of high times just not finding their way to get out of this horrible debt that they're in no matter what this guy adam levin tries yeah it seems like even their you know their new ceo had a troubled past not only in the cannabis cbd space but also before that at victoria's secret and the l brand merger that's fallen apart so Boy, they're kind of limping here to the to the IPO lines, you know, barely barely holding on. I, I don't know how that's going to go or if it's going to happen, but they certainly got to get more dispensaries and things lined up if they're going retail, like they've been telling people for 90 days now. And speaking of dispensaries and retail and adult use, the state of Massachusetts, where we... <laughs> where we are both natives of, and we produce this program every week, has finally opened up the adult use recreational world again. And I know our friend, uh, Kobe Evans, in the Boston, the only Boston dispensary, is thrilled about that. And they open on Monday, Memorial Day. And if you were watching We Talk News last week, we actually had a source that said that's when it was going to open. And of course, this week it happened. And next week, it'll be open for curbside delivery and pre-order fulfillment. That's the way it probably should have been at the beginning, Kurt, don't you think? Yeah, we've talked about that, where there could have been a, a medium ground if we had a pro-cannabis governor who wanted it to happen. Uh, Keith talked about it on our interview at, from Rev Clinics that this was kind of coming, not on the 18th, which was our first date to actually open businesses, but it was coming soon after. Uh, but I'm glad to see Governor Baker and the CCC and, you know, the dispensaries could come to some sort of agreement on curbside. Nobody in the store. Delivery might, you know, be more aggressive, but it's the same thing restaurants are doing. So why, why can't cannabis? It's a whole new world out there. And Deborah Borchart, our business reporter in New York, has the rest of the business news from this week. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Jimmy. This week, Massachusetts said that recreational cannabis sales could return on Monday, May 25th. Customers, though, can't go into the stores to make their purchases. They have to make them curbside. Green growth brands filed for insolvency this week. You may recall that the company closed their CBD chain of stores called Seventh Sense back in March. Well, they had some debentures due in May. They defaulted on them, and so now they filed for insolvency. The company has one dispensary in Las Vegas, Nevada called The Source. We had a lot of earnings this week, but really the biggest one was from Trulieve. The company reported that they had revenues in the first quarter of $96 million. This beat the Yahoo Finance estimate of $90 million for the quarter. And finally, Acreage Holdings said that they're going to take a pre-tax non-cash charge of between $80 million and $100 million. The company also sold their one medical marijuana dispensary in North Dakota, and they sold their undeveloped real estate in Nantucket in Massachusetts. And that's it for this week. I'm Deborah Borchart from the Green Marker Report, reporting for We Talk News. Well, once again, Kurt, it looks like another Massachusetts entity is involved with cannabis, and it's a company named Reliva that I hadn't even heard of. They're in Natick, Massachusetts, and now they're actually been bought by Aurora Cannabis. You have this story. Yeah, Aurora's been looking for a way into the U.S. market, but before everybody gets super excited about it, this is not a THC or dispensary-based deal. This is a CBD company, uh, CBD from hemp. So in one way, yes, it gets Aurora with, through their spinoff company into the U.S. with a footprint, with retail, with a product. But, you know, CBD is super competitive right now. It's a little bit of a race to the bottom on margins. They're in, but again, it's not a dispensary deal. It's not THC. 
Uh, we'll see how it goes. At least it gets them in America. It gives them that structure. And maybe there's some more moves ahead as far as getting on the THC side. And I believe it's a $40 million deal, which is, you know, certainly not Trump change. Uh, if you happen to have a little CBD company out there. Oh, um, yeah, especially a small company out of Natick, Mass. So I'm sure they're uh, enjoying it. And congratulations to them. And now we're going to introduce a new entry into our we taught news. His name is Solomon Israel. He's a MJ Biz Daily international reporter, and this is his report from O Canada. I'm Solomon Israel from Marijuana Business Daily International, and this is the Weed Talk News Canadian Cannabis Report. Licensed cannabis stores in the Canadian province of Ontario were allowed to reopen to foot traffic this week. Those stores have been closed since early April due to COVID-19 although they've been allowed to offer curbside pickup and home delivery under an emergency provision from the provincial government. Alberta-based Aurora Cannabis has sold off a large greenhouse in Ontario for about half its original listing price and just one-third of the original purchase price. That's part of an ongoing trend in Canada where some producers, including Canopy Growth, who bought up greenhouses in recent years, have sold those assets off. And Ohio-based marijuana retailer Green Growth Brands has filed for creditor protection in Canada. Green Growth Brands trades on the Canadian Securities Exchange. The company owes more than $100 million U.S. million in secured debt, according to court filings. You can read all those stories and more on mjbusinessdaily.com. That'll do it for this week's Weed Talk News Canadian Cannabis Report. I'm Solomon Israel, reporter for Marijuana Business Daily. Now that the coronavirus has wiped out in-person conventions, MJ BizCon is producing two online events at the same time over the same two dates, June 29th to July 1st. MJ BizCon Next Direct and the Hemp Industry Daily Conference Direct will all happen at the same time and will feature industry speakers and exhibitors. And you will be able to connect directly to all of them in this state-of-the-art online event. You can register today at mjbizconference.com. That's mjbizconference.com. Okay, Kurt, our next story is kind of disturbing. It happened over the last weekend, and it happened in Los Angeles, California. There was a major fire that injured 12 firefighters at a butane wholesaler that originally a lot of people thought that this was a hash oil company of some kind because the fire chief at the scene was the one who actually used those words, hash oil. And it has caused quite a controversy, both for advocates and for prohibitionists. What do you think of this story? And now Forbes is coming out with some other reporting facts that indeed there was no cannabis found at the site of this fire. I think it's a race for a headline. When it first happened, you heard butane. That city block does have some cannabis uh, ancillary companies. So they assumed it was hash and I, whether someone misspoke originally when they saw the fire. So the world, you know, gave their opinion on the cannabis industry for better or worse. You know, loved it, hate it. Look what this is what could happen. And now Forbes is releasing. It actually had not didn't have anything to do with cannabis. It was a butane not related to cannabis. Will those same people that made those headlines and those criticism walk them back? Issue it a uh, mea culpa? Probably not, because it's about getting the click in that moment. But it just goes to show. You know, whether it's a good headline or bad headline for cannabis, if you rush in and start giving your opinion and, and getting it out there, the, you know, check your facts. And, and yet, again, I'm going to actually defend any reporter on that scene because the fire chief on the scene used the term hash oil, and that's what set off this whole controversy. And of course, you got to check your facts. That's the most important thing when you're a reporter. Okay, we've got another news item for you, Virginia. The state of Virginia has voted now to allow the infusion of CBD in food products, which I find is fascinating because the FDA has already said, we don't want that. But Virginia is, you know, for lovers, I guess. That's why they want the CBD in there. I don't know. Well, like anything, it's about money. So there's some money coming in and, and people think they can make money and tax revenue from a CBD infused product, whether it's a new company coming in to create jobs or a product that people want. Um, yeah, telling the FDA, we don't care about your regulation. We're going this direction. You're starting to see states kind of start to do that uh, here and there at federal policy, not to mention the whole marijuana thing. 
Um, so CBD infused food, while well, the FDA is dragging their feet and kind of not knowing, you know, let's do some testing, states are moving forward. Yeah, unbelievable. Once again, at the federal government, let's not go there this week. What do you think? Hey, Oklahoma, we've talked about Oklahoma. They've had hundreds of dispensaries open up there over in their first year or two of being legal, at least on the medical side of things. And now it looks like Oklahoma is going to actually introduce a breathalyzer program to see if they can actually catch those who are operating vehicles under the influence. And you know who's gonna be the big winner here, Kurt? Who's gonna be the big winner in this one? I'm oh, gonna go with uh, Hound Labs, because I think it's their breathalyzer that they're okay. using. And um, there was a chemist who finally figured out how to get it just right. You could do the roadside test. But just because the test says an amount of THC that's in your blood, here we go down the, the alcohol road of, well, I can drive at a point one one THC. You can't. I weigh so much. You're so tall. Just because it says something, what's the legal definition going to be of your high, too high to drive? And those lawyers are going to have a, just a field day in court uh, when precedents are finally happening here. But Oklahoma is ready to go with breathalyzers. And again, another example of why everything changes in the cannabis universe on a daily basis. And that'll do it for another edition of Weed Talk News. I'm the founder of Pro Cannabis Media, Jimmy Young. And I'm the founder of Cannabis.net, Kirk Dalton. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area, now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge, and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient-first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. We are Pro Cannabis Media. We Talk Now, We Talk News, and In the Weeds are all available on most major podcast distributors like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and our friends at clnsmedia.com and our flagship, cannabis.net. So subscribe, share, and like our videos on all the social media networks out there, including LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, The Weed Tube, and YouTube. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area, now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge, and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient-first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. We are Pro Cannabis Media.